Hi everybody, my name is John and in this video you're going to learn all about content migration with an Umbraco CMS V9. Specifically in this video I'm going to show you how you can import and export content, document types and data types from one instance of Umbraco into another one. So I'm going to show you a few ways how you can do this. So we're going to look at how you can use the out of the box functionality, creating packages. We're also going to look at an amazing community plugin that I use on all of my projects called Usync. Usync has loads of features. So I'm going to show you how to install it, how to set it up, how it works, all that amazing stuff. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to briefly go into a little bit of architecture. So if you want to do a content migration from something like a WordPress, boo! WordPress sucks, boo. So yeah, if you're trying to do a content migration into Umbraco, I'm quickly going into the architecture and the recommended steps and approach that I, that you, I think you should follow. So if this all sounds a wunderbar to you, then I think you should also smash the subscribe button. I do a weekly YouTube videos on development and productivity and how to become the best developer you can be. So if you haven't already and all of that jazz floats your boat, hit subscribe and be a legend. So if you've done that, let's crack on and start looking at how you can import and export some content using the out of the box Umbraco functionalities. Unfortunately, when it comes to importing and exporting content using Umbraco V9, there is a bit of a unfortunate caveat. Now let's walk through quickly the process of importing and exporting content in Umbraco V8 and you'll be able to see where the issue lies. So in V8, you'll go to this packages tab right here, clicking on it, you'll see the option to install local and created. Now clicking on the created tab is going to allow you to click on create package. And from here, you can include all the document types, data types, all of that beautiful stuff that you want to include in import and export. Now, Clicking on create package will basically generate you a package XML file and then using this install local, you can then import it. Now, some of you probably won't have seen this blog post, which was written a few months ago, June in 2021. And it basically goes through saying that the way that packages are working now in Umbraco v9 has changed. And unfortunately, because of the differences between ASP net framework and .NET Core, the way that, you know, DLLs get uploaded and all that kind of jazz is changed and it's giving all the Umbraco team some qualms and a bit of trouble. So this means that if we go into our Umbraco V9 backend, as you can see in front of us, zooms in, we can go to packages now. And when we look in packages, we've got the option to have a look at the installed ones and the created ones. So we can still create our new package and this is going to create us that package.xml file. However, there's no way nowadays of importing any packages by the Umbraco backend. So this means that you can generate the package. You could probably use one of the APIs to import one of the packages. However, this is going to involve writing some custom code. Now this is where usync can come and save the day. So we'll cover now how to install usync and how to use it to manage this content migration. Fortunately, installing using is super simple. There's not really any configuration you need to do. All you need to do is head over to the new get. You could use the CLI if it makes you more happier. However, I find managing packages through you get still much easier. Right click on solution or your website and then click on manage new get packages. Now you want to install all of these packages on your website project and go to your browse and basically do a search for the you sync. Now, as you can see on the screen, if you squint probably, is that there's quite a lot of options for using. Now, the ones that you're specifically interested in are the ones which are flagged as nine. So as you can see here, we've got using, using call, using snapshots. And you want to avoid doing anything which is referenced to V8 or below, because this is just going to throw an error and cause you a headache. So in my site, you can see that I've installed the usync, usync.backoffice. So this means that we can interact with usync through the CMS. I've also installed the people edition and the snapshot edition. So snapshots can allow you to create a point in time snapshot of your Embraco instance. 
and the people edition is going to allow you to do the member and profile export and import so all really cool useful things now to get going with usync after you install it you want to launch your websites and then you want to jump over to the cms now when you're in the cms you want to go to the settings section and from the settings section you'll see a new bright shiny synchronization setting with this option with usync so clicking on this you're going to see this basic dashboard and from here it's pretty intuitive what it's doing so you can import and export everything you can export users content settings so if you just want to care about your document types data types and just copy all of that stuff over you can do that so the ones that i find the most useful if i'm honest are settings and content so clicking all this export malarkey is going to start exporting everything and underneath you can see you know an updated screen of what's been completed and what's been imported and exported now the important thing to understand about the use syncs is where are all the data stored so if we go to our web route so this is my starter kit web route you can see that we've got this folder called the use sync and if we click on this you can see we've got v9 and in v9 we've got all of these options so we've got things like content content types data types and if we look inside of them you're going to see that we have all of these config files and opening on one of these config files you're going to see a load of xml which is going to define all these different schemas so in order to copy data types and content and all of that beautiful stuff from one environment to the other one way is you can just include your using folder using git and then as soon as you publish your files onto a different environment they're automatically going to be read in alternatively all you need to do is make sure that using can store on all your different environments and then come into this folder pick the files that you want to copy so let's say you want to copy these data types copy the files manually put them in a zip file put them on the other server you're in the environment and then as soon as you actually put it in the folder you sync can then import them now going back into cms there's actually some useful settings which are probably worth talking about so in the right hand side right here you can see the big settings button now from here you can see that we have loads of different types of config so we can enable you sync to import everything at startup export on save we can fail on missing parent items and basically we have a number of configurations to allow us to tweak it to our needs now one thing that you're going to notice is that the settings are controlled via app settings.json and you can have an example of the view settings here now unfortunately i think there's a few bits and bobs which are missing and there's probably a bit more documentation which can come at a later date which will help you out however the vital bits that you'll probably want to configure are here so as you'll notice there's no way within the cms whatsoever to update these settings so moving back to our visual studios what you want to do is basically get that config that i've just highlighted and then you want to copy it so as you can see in my app.json underneath my umbraco folder you can see that i've copied in this usync settings so I've got the usync bit here where I'm saying I want to import a startup equals all, export and save equal all, save it and publish it. And basically, with installing those packages and then making sure you have those files included in your Git, and then you've got this bit of config here, that's everything you need to start doing importing and exporting with an unbracket. Now, I do think it is a bit unfortunate that you can't use the package feature anymore. However, because usync is such a great plugin to use, I always recommend that you install this on every single project and rely on this to basically share your data types and all of your content around the development team because this is going to make you an, an effective bunch of peoples. The last type of content migration that I'd like to cover in this video typically happens at the start of a new project when someone's moving from an old system and they're moving into Umbraco. Typically because the content editors are a bit lazy, they're going to ask you to come up with some automated script to get all the data from the old CMS and magically import it into Umbraco. Now this is possible, however, it will require some custom development work. So I'm just going to quickly go through the structure that you're going to need to follow. Now, one tip before you start importing content 
is that I strongly recommend that you also store your old CMS ID within Umbraco. You can delete this, you know, in a couple of months time. However, having that ID can be really handy, especially if you need to do any further updates, you'll be able to target all the content based on this ID. So this is a little tip for me to you. To typically add in this type of ID, you're going to need to use a content modeling pattern where you create some sort of base type like I have here, create all your other pages underneath it, and then within your base page type, have your old CMS ID. So yeah, little tip, don't forget to do that because it can be really handy. Now, in terms of importing content inside of Embreco, what I recommend is that you get your old CMS and you export everything to a CSV file or some JSON files or whatever it's meant to be. Now, when Embreco launches, what we'll do is create a composer and a component, and this component will then read in all of those JSON data files. It's then going to use the Embreco APIs and it's going to generate the content within the CMS. So the process is a bit manual and you will have to do a lot of content mapping, especially if you have loads of different types of document types. However, you know, unfortunately, this is the only way to go about. So when someone does ask you this, I would strongly recommend you look at the amount of content and say if you can do the content migration in an hour or two hours, I would go for manual. If it's going to take you, you know, a week, a month or whatever to actually do this migration, then think about doing a script. So in terms of creating a script, quickly cover the code you'll need to think about adding. So the first thing I recommend you do is create a composer. So as you can see, I've got this iComposer thing where I'm registering loads of composers and components. So at the bottom here, I've got this builder.components.append and then I'm adding in this type of content importer. So within my components folder, I've created a class called content importer. And from here, this is just going to implement the iComponent interface. And this comes from, woo, very close. And this is coming from Umbraco, Snz Core Composing. Now, within this type of architecture, you're going to be needing to work with content. So not the published content, which exists in the cache. You'll be needing to use actual CMS content and updating the Umbraco database. So in order to do this, you'll need to use the iContent service. Now, if all of this is new to you, I have done a previous video in this series on the difference between iPublish content and content. So if you look from the links below, you'll be able to find a video or link to that video. So in this example, importing content is fairly intuitive. What we want to do is read that file from disk. So in this example, we can see that I'm reading in this example.json. And in my web route, I just have this simple example.json where the name is hello. And from here, I'm just using uh, json.net to then parse this into an object. I can then use that object to render stuff in the C sharps. Now, whenever you're creating a new object inside of the CMS, you're going to need to give it a parent ID. So you can either use the int value for the parent or you can use the GUID value. So in order to get the GUID value, I recommend that you use the Umbraco model builder. So you create all the document types using that. And then using that model, you can use the key value to get that GUID. So yeah, this is basically the outline of iterate through a CSV file or load of JSON files, get the parent ID, get the data from that file. And then we go into this import content. So using that content service, you can use the create method. And using create, you can give it a name, you give it the parent ID, and then you give it the alias for the document type that you'd like to inject it with. So this is gonna be the thing that will be, be created with. So again, I recommend you use model builder, and then when you use model builder, you can just use this model type alias property to access the document type alias. Now, after you've got this new page object, you can then use the set value method and then using set value you can add in the name and the actual data that you want to inject so iterate through all your files do a load of these set values once you're happy that the page has everything that you want it to have then you can use this save and publish and this is going to persist the information and all the data into the cms's now if we quickly go back to the umbracos you can see that if i go to the content tab 
every single time that I now launch my CMS, I'm getting these new pages being created. So I've got this new node name. I've got the title being imported from that JSON file and everything is groovy. So yeah, if you're trying to do a content migration piece from old CMS to new, it is going to take a lot of work. Really think about if there's value in doing it. However, you're going to need to use that iContent service and I recommend you do everything inside a composer and a component to make your life much easier. By now, I'm hoping that you feel like you're an absolute umbraco content migration badass. Now, yes, it is a bit of a pain in the bottom that you can no longer use the out of the box import export feature. However, if I'm honest, I've used Usync pretty much nonstop since V7. It provides more capabilities. It gives you a better release process. So yeah, just use that instead. Now, you know the drill. If you have liked this video, please show me a little bit of love. Do me the solid of hitting the like button. Basically, this tricks YouTube into sharing my video to more people and also tells me that I should be doing more on Braco content. Now, if you have an idea or a topic that you haven't seen me do yet, then yeah, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video yet, again, let me know. So, it also gets to the stage where you should be smashing that subscribe button. Do that, become a legend. Um, I really do appreciate how quickly and how much this channel is growing. So, thanks to everyone out there, you are legends. Aside from that, my new Umbraco book is out, Umbraco SP.NET 5 Mastery. It's all about the new version, how to do all the amazing stuff. Um, you can have a look at it from the link below. You can get access to the pre-release. Um, soon there will be an actual version you can download. It's going to be, you know, only chapter one and each month you'll get a new chapter. But paying now basically keeps me motivated to write it. And it also means that you can get it for a discounted price. So it's a win-win for both of us. So um, I hope you've got some value from this video and I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. And see you next time. Happy coding.